Cleveland Browns are through 10 practices thus far of 2024 training camp, and there's been a lot of good. There's no doubt about it, but there are certainly some questions. We're going to discuss them now. Your latest Lockdown Browns is live. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that ever ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on the LLB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, brought to the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Jeff Lloyd. I appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. The show is available wherever you get your podcast and be like an everydayer. Join the everyday crowd, subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. We are going to get into some things, but we have to... Get some things started here and out of the way first. Today's episode of Locked On Browns is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. We'll get to it a little bit later, um, but the renderings are in for what is going to be the new facility in Brook Park, um, the dome. Gorgeous. Look, I understand for any of you that maybe the sentimentality. Of Cleveland Brown Stadium, the sentimentality of you know your time there, your time at the old stadium, and you know football being outside. This place looks like it's going to be magnificent. That is all that matters. Fans, you fans, deserve the best. So why are you quipping, crying about being given the best? That or what the Aslan's trying to do. Now. So we have some questions as to you know where the Browns are now. There are a lot of good. There's a lot of good. Not gonna you know just not gonna you know try to make this like a poo poo thing, but there's certainly some questions that you would have up until this point through Browns training camp. Uh, my first one is is when are we going to see Jedrick Wills and when are we going to see Jack Conklin? Because outside of Juwan Jones, these tackle play and the Browns did work out a veteran offensive line camp Fleming today. Browns were off today, by the way. Um, veteran offensive line can uh, veteran offensive tackle camp Fleming today. This is a rough group right now. Um, and you see, see a lot of reps coming in camp where the play just ends up being squashed because, you know, the, the defensive line is doing their thing, but keep in mind, they're playing against a lot of offensive tackles that probably aren't even going to make the Cleveland Browns. Um, so that's certainly a big issue to this point has been, you know, the offensive tackle play as we wait for Jedrick Wills and wait for Jack Conklin uh, to f- get back into it, you know, get off pup list, get back at least into practicing. Um, you know, neither guy I think will see a, you know, a rep here in training camp, but it, it, it's fair to ask when, you know, when is it, when is nervous time? In regards to Jed- Jedrick Wills and Jack Conklin getting back in, being ready, you know, we are about, 30 days or so away from the opener. So it's a fair question to ask, you know, when, you know, these guys are going to be back and, you know, ready to get themselves in shape for, you know, the Dallas Cowboys. And of course, a guy like Micah Parsons and a really good pass rushing Dallas Cowboys defensive line. Certainly fair things to ask. And, you know, it, it's kind of getting late early for me. Um, I just at least want to hear that they're back on the field. You know, I, I mean, I don't need team stuff, any of that stuff, at least getting back to individual work, getting their stamina up, getting their cardio in. Uh, certainly an issue for the Cleveland Browns right now. Um, the running back situation, I guess the thing, same thing kind of applies here. Um, Naheem Hines not practicing yet. Uh, Dante Foreman, it's about almost a week now that Dante has been out um, with, you know, what was a really, really scary scenario for him. Everything turned out to be pretty damn positive for Dante Foreman. Um, but, you know, for going into the game Saturday against the Green Bay Packers, I mean, it looks like you got the, you know, the, you know Jerome Ford. I doubt they're going to let him play. You got John Kelly. You have the, you know, the undrafted uh, rookie and Aiden Robbins. But w- when are these guys who are going to be, you know, meaningful players for the Cleveland Browns as far as the running game and certainly receiving out of the backfield? When are these guys going to be a part of things? Is it going to be soon? Is it going to be later? Because, you know, it's another thing that, you know, if you're looking at this stuff objectively, objectively, uh, objectively and fairly, you know, and we'll see how it plays out Saturday against Green Bay. Um, but it, it, it's fair to have some concerns right now. 
um, you know, offensive line and, you know, running game goes hand in hand. And, you know, a lot of the guys who are going to be participating against Dallas uh, aren't doing much of anything right now. Um, so I have more concern than I would if it was any of the past four seasons. Um, just because, you know, you are breaking in certainly a new offense coordinator, a whole bunch of new offensive coaches, certainly a new offensive line coach. Um, you're trying to, you know, work on different things and add different things to the offense as you're bringing in all these, you know, new voices, you know, into the coaches rooms, into the coaches meetings. Um, so I think it's fair to, you know, to bring up these concerns, um, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, I'm really, really to this point, I've been really impressed with the quarterback play. Um, I've really been impressed with the wide receivers. We know what Coop is about, you know, capable of. We've seen glimpses of Jerry Judy and, you know, starting to see what the Browns vision is for a player with that talent. Cedric Tillman, in my opinion, might be one of the best players in Browns training camp right now. Um, the rookie Jamari Thrash, you see a little flashes here and then. Um, you know, Elijah Moore, you know, as long as he can stay on the field, he gives the Browns a reliable guy, you know, that can help out as a third and fourth option in the passing game. David Njoku has been incredible, you know, whether or not, you know, there's, you know, any heed to my concern that, you know, I think they might need some more help there at the tight end position. I'm not sure that the Browns possibly feel that way. Um, you know, so it, you're just trying to go through this here and you're trying to see what looks good, you know, what doesn't look good. And fortunately for the Browns, some of the things that doesn't look good, like the pass blocking, like the offensive tackle play, there is a significant reason obviously for that is you don't have neither either of your starting offensive tackles doing much of anything right now. So it's understandable that your offensive tackle play is a concern to this point. Um, so, you know, hopefully for Jed and Jack, it's, a, you know, a question of that these guys are, you know, hopefully going to be, you know, joining the fold here soon. You know, the running game, we'll see how it plays out Saturday. Again, I keep telling everybody, this is one of the hardest things you don't, you, you can't really get this out of the drills they do right now as far as where the running backs are, the evaluation of the running backs, any of that type of stuff. You know, we'll kind of get an idea of it, you know, Saturday, certainly against Green Bay Packers, um, which probably figures to be a heavy John Kelly, Aiden Robbins game. Um, I just don't know how it would work any other way. Browns are certainly without Nick Chubb and, of course, without Dante Foreman and without Naheem Hines. And, you know, for Jerome Ford, I think it's just too great of a risk to have Jerome Ford being take any reps right now. Right now, it's the Jerome Ford show, <laughs> most likely December 8th against uh, Dallas Cowboys. So, you know, there's certainly, you know, fair to have concerns here. Because some of them warranted. Some of them we just maybe need to see a little bit more. And we'll get our first glimpse of that Saturday against the Green Bay Packers. Speaking of what we can hope to expect Saturday, I want to talk a little about the quarterbacks and their play. Your latest Lockdown Browns continues. Appreciate everybody for being along for the ride. We are in August, and it is definitely time if you're a baseball fan to start peeking at the wild card. And if your team's still in it, then you want to be in the building to see your team play. That's where you can use Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. They make getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. They got killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. They've got flash deals. You save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. They have all-in price link. Toggling the feature shows the total up front. So when you get to that final stage, all of a sudden that fee didn't jump $40, $50, etc. You guys know what I'm talking about. The lowest price guarantee on game time will credit you 100% of the difference if you can find your ticket for a cheaper price somewhere else. The game time ticket coverage, your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Jeff Lloyd, your latest Lockdown Browns continues. I appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. Join the everyday crowd. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Do not miss any content that may be coming your way. And, of course, the show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. 
Now, going into Saturday, and now we know Deshaun Watson will not play Saturday, which means we'll probably see all three quarterbacks. Jameis Winston is going to start. Um, Jameis Winston, and, you know, he's he gets talked about a lot. And Jameis Winston it just has an electric personality. Um, it was that way at Florida State. It was certainly that way in Tampa. It was certainly that way down in New Orleans. He is just a guy that people kind of gravitate towards. And he, in my opinion thus far, you know, he's definitely a bombs away quarterback. We certainly talked about this when the whole thing, when they signed Winston and Flacco was going to Indianapolis. You signed Edge Joe Flacco type. You just signed a younger one. So everyone that kind of got bent out of shape about that, understandable, I guess. But, you know, you, you the same reason you were entertaining Brandon Ayuk is because of the fact that you felt you could get younger and get the same type of thing. That's the same reason the Browns went after Jameis Winston. They felt they could get a backup quarterback who was younger and came gave them kind of the same big arm, can wow you with a lot of throws, can scare the daylights out of you with a lot of throws at times. Um, but Jameis, to this point, it, it, it's looked pretty good. The, the arm is still there. The arm is still all 100% there that it always has been. He'll probably get to go out there with Cedric Tillman, who he's had a nice rapport with thus far. Whether a lot of Elijah Moore gets some reps, I'm not sure. Probably won't see Jerry Judy. He hasn't practiced much. Certainly probably not going to see Amari Cooper. Probably an opportunity for Jamari Thresh. And, and certainly, you know, Michael Woods the second, David Bell. These guys will all be probably working hand in hand. Certainly with Jameis on Saturday. Dorian Thompson Robinson, and this is one where a lot of people I talk with, you know, who are at camp every day, it, it seems to them, and maybe it's because you know he's the three this year and he's not in this battle of whether or not he may be the number two and, you know, how basically the Browns' hand got forced last year. But a lot of people, you know, want to comment on where they think Dorian Thompson Robinson is a lot further down the road, which he should be in year two. Than he was last year as a rookie. Just physically looks a little better, a little bit thicker. Um, you know, showing a little bit more confidence, kind of taking ownership in the huddle, you know, kind of taking ownership in, you know, his portion of seven on sevens, you know, being able to voice himself, trying to get guys lined up right. It's just, you know, there's that big, big thing from you know your first camp as a rookie to your even just your second, and you just become a lot more, you know an in-the-moment guy, a control aspect of the moment guy. And, you know, DTR did play some meaningless, meaningful football last year. Um, you know, certainly had the big win against the Pittsburgh Steelers. I still say to this day, if DTR got to finish that game in Denver, I think he would have found a way to lead that team to victory against Denver last year. Um, so you're starting to see, and, you know, for the Browns who, you know, really, really like DTR, um, not this past draft cycle, two draft cycles ago, they met with a bunch of quarterbacks. You knew they were going to draft one. Um, I still remember DTR's combine and, you know, he was out there throwing with CJ Stroud in that group and blew me away. He really, really just really impressive. We all remember the summer DTR had last year and kind of looking to see, you know, what he can give the team this year as he goes into his second training camp. Um, you know, not much pressure, certainly with Jameis in front of him. You know, I don't think Tyler Huntley is a real threat. Tyler Huntley, we get to see a bunch of, I'm sure on Saturday as well, you know, former pro bowler, you know, that one here, um, certainly, a you know, a thought process to try to get Tyler Huntley to play well here in the summer. We know how, when the Browns get close to that final cut down, you know, they would love to be able to, you know, they will take all the seventh round picks they can for any player that they may cut. Uh, I believe it was somebody, somebody just Cardinals content actually brought up the name Tyler Huntley because certainly, you know, the whole Dobbs thing last year and whether or not the Cardinals and Browns would be you know, willing to reunite again, perhaps on a type of move, you know, where maybe Tyler Huntley could go over there. And, you know, this year it's a little different. You know, there is not really an opening position to start the season for the Arizona Cardinals with Kyler Murray back and well. Um, but, you know, trying to, you know, shore up you know, that backup position that hopefully they don't certainly have to go to. Um, but, you know, you get these types of things. You know, we know Deshaun's mobile. Jameis is kind of mobile, you know, in his own way. You know, certainly looks like, you know, old, old man, you know, walking on his kids' Legos. But once he kind of gets moving, there's a little something to it. We know about DTR's athletic ability. We certainly know about Huntley's ability. We've seen Tyler Huntley a bunch of times. 
But I really want to see if this strong play for these quarterbacks to this point, you know, translates because I think it should translate into these preseason games. They're not going to see, you know, defenses that are on the caliber of the Cleveland Browns, who, you know, many thought were a top, you know, top number one or number two defense in the NFL last season. So definitely a lot of eyes to that and how this team, you know, responds and how these quarterbacks respond after the strong play they've had to this point this summer. And I know some people think, you know, that things are down, but a lot of these plays are just getting blown up. So, you know, once the quarterback leaves the pocket, nobody really is following the play after that. Granted, in the NFL, that counts. You know, broken plays count in the NFL. Broken plays usually in NFL training camps are shut down because something stupid can happen, and that's how somebody can sustain a serious injury when it could have easily been prevented. So that's why you don't get necessarily these broken play looks in training camp than you certainly would get in any game, starting with the preseason on Saturday, of course. Um, so just a lot to continue to, you know, watch in the way it unfolds here, because um, I think all the quarterbacks have had really, really good relationships with the wide receivers. We know all about DTR and, of course, Cedric Tillman having their own personal relationship that goes all the way back to the high school days together. That certainly translated well last year. Certainly the Denver game, I think, was five balls that Cedric Tillman caught from DTR that day. But even though it isn't Deshaun Watson, and whether he plays this summer or not, I don't know. I personally think he's not going to. Um, but again, we'll see how that you know continues to go. But you know, for these quarterbacks, it's been a pretty good and strong beginning here through ten training camp practices. Um, they'll get back on the field Thursday, which will probably be a normal practice. Friday, probably just a quick walkthrough, and you know they kick it up for real and you know tee it up for real Saturday against the Green Bay Packers. Um, you know, should be exciting. I'm certainly you know want to get a look at what Bubba Ventrones you know, initial thoughts here as far as, you know, because he's now had, and I think this is going to be one advantage that we'll maybe see this week, is that these special teams coaches now got to at least see a little bit of live film on some of this stuff. Grand Lane was only two and a half quarters of the Hall of Fame game. But you're trying to start to, you know, figure that out. And, you know, hey, you know, oh, is he doing something similar to me? Did that work? Did that not work? You know, the, you know. so, you know, it, the, the special team stuff will be a work in progress, certainly throughout the summer. And hopefully you can just get it as fine-tuned as you possibly can when you start getting towards, you know, week one against the Dallas Cowboys. But hopefully special teams play just continues to improve as the year goes on. Again, a lot of newness in the rules and how it's going to be played. And it's, you know, it, it gives you some certainly some, you know, maybe a little, you know, restless nights that something stupid could happen and cause a team a, a ball game early in the season as everybody tries to figure this out. But certainly something to, you know, continue and something that I am looking forward to. Um, and we'll get to more coverage of and, and, and talk about what, you know, what we're looking for on Saturday as the next couple of days go on. Uh, but we are going to continue on here. We're going to talk a little bit about this new stadium and the pictures and the renderings because chef's kiss, Jimmy Haslam. But also, um, there's a lot of young guys here who are now in prime depth position uh, for the Browns, and they're going to need to step it up, and hopefully it's going to start Saturday. Uh, latest Lifetime Browns continues. I love sports. I love them so much I never want them to stop. Just ask my wife. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sporting like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets any time I'm in the mood. In this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone, every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Jeff Lloyd, we are closing out your latest Lockdown Browns. As always, I appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. Join the everyday crowd. Don't miss any Lockdown Browns content. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcast. Um, so now, as far as, you know, the, the depth thing here, you know, and Michael Dunn, now, Michael Dunn's been around here a long time, and he's certainly been a great, great part of the Browns' interior offensive line when he's got the opportunity to play. Hasn't been doing much of anything lately. So, you know, Zach Zinter, and look, there's a real possibility that Zach Zinter would be the first guard off the bench come 
September 8th. So certainly want to see, you know, Zach Zinter and how he looks here. I mean, he was a beast at Michigan. Everybody Michigan-wise you speak to speak highly of him. Coach Harbaugh spoke highly of him. Um, so certainly an opportunity here for this rookie to, you know, get a grasp you know, on an opportunity, on a stranglehold for some playing time. Um, you know, that also probably goes, for, you know, for a couple other guys on the offensive line as well. Um, as, you know, we try to pay down, you know, we know the first string, um, trying to figure out the rest of the second string. Like we know Dewan Jones is part of that. We know Zach Zinter is part of that. You know, will JV on Cohen, and this is going to be big. This is a guy that Browns really thought was a really good football player. Maybe just got caught into a weird numbers game as to why he didn't get drafted. So JV on Cohen, certainly a guy here who could be thrust into an opportunity to, you know, try to, you know, make this roster, you know, because, you know, for, if the Browns were to lose him to keep possibly, you know, keep the, to keep the thought process that you're going to be able to keep a JV on Cohen on your practice squad for, you know, a 17 game, 18 week season probably seems a little bit far fetched to be completely honest with you. Defensive side of the ball, you know, look, I mean, I think we're all giddy and kind of like just absolutely fired up to see, you know, Mike Hall get out there and make his Cleveland Browns debut. Um, you know, we certainly have heard, you know, to Quentin Jefferson speaking on him. We've certainly, you know, heard from other guys you know, speaking on Mike Hall Jr. You know, let's uh, I don't want to use the Aaron D.O.N. I won't even say the name. I mean, I don't ever want to give anybody that type of comparison ever. Um, but it does go to show you that, you know, the guys, you know, think he's probably got a really strong get off. Um, he's probably got good pass rush skills. Uh, so certainly a huge, huge opportunity for my call. And as some of these veterans, you know, are not here yet, Dalvin Tomlinson, Shelby Harris, you know, my call goes out and does some really, really good things. It's only going to help the older veterans. It's going to maybe lighten their, you know, workload a little bit. You know, they won't get as many ABs, but they'll go and get those ABs where they are probably at top shelf, you know what I'm saying, running with the tank on full. Um, Isaiah McGuire, Alex Wright, I'm sorry, Siaki Ika as well, certainly, you know, a, a huge, huge guy to watch, uh, you know, Saturday against Green Bay. You know, it's, you know, it's getting late early for Siaki Ika as far as even having a roster spot with this team. But, you know, him battling, certainly, you know, he's not battling Mike Hall. Michael's going to make this team, but certainly battling against a guy like Juwan Briggs. Um, Alex Wright, and of course, um, Isaiah McGuire should see a boatload of playing time. Sidari Smith, we know, is still dinged up, um, you know, with the contusion. You know, Miles Garrett, you know, Miles Garrett said, way, way, he's been a, a point of his career for a long time where Miles Garrett does not to be a part of anything in the preseason. So, you know, opportunities for those guys, but you know, the Browns want to get so many pass rushers on the field. You know, they want to, if they have the confidence in you, that allows them to get more rest for Darius, Zedaria Smith. You know, it also allows you to have the confidence to take defensive tackles off the field and say, we want to go more NASCAR. We want to go play four pure pass rushers in dime situations, in nickel situations. Um, and, you know, it gives you a, you know, a better opportunity to chase down these quarterbacks who might break the tackle, but also gives you, you know, the better opportunity for more get off and your guys just getting in the backfield as quickly as possible. You know, the linebackers, you know, Mohamed Diabate right now is getting a lot of reps. Devin Bush, big interception the other day in team, getting a lot of reps. Of course, uh, Bukay Watson um, and what he can truly, you know, bring. And, you know, I think there, there's a lot of faith in him, even though he was just a day three, sixth round pick. I think the Browns feel they got a guy who really can do a bunch of things. That's what you're looking for when you draft day three. You know, oh, he's a little bit of a pass rusher. Oh, he can do a little bit of zone coverage. He's a really good and willing tackler. But when you get kind of those things, you know, it's like, all right, well, he can do a little bit of that. That's what makes day three picks become role players and maybe even one day valuable players for an NFL team. But when you can – check a couple of boxes as far as what you do while you're physically on the field. The appeal of what you can bring your team is huge. It's paramount. You know, and certainly for me, you know, Mohamed Diabate, I it was a guy I was impressed with all last summer. I thought he showed really, really well as a special teamer last year. So I want to see where that growth is because he was a great player at Florida. He was a great player at Utah. It was weird how he got, you know, went undrafted because, you know, athletically, tape wise, everything. Mohamed Diabate had him as a player to be drafted. And Browns were able to get him at UDFA, stayed on the roster the entire season as a rookie. And maybe the Browns could start to see some major dividends in year two from Muhammad Diabate. Um, you know, Cameron Mitchell. Um, and you know, certainly, you know, definitely a bunch of others need to take these opportunities 
and you know run with them here you know with greg newsom not playing and you know, ward and probably martin emerson not playing miles harden as well there's gonna be opportunities for these guys i mean there's gonna be a lot of reps or miles harden's i mean miles harden's probably playing slot which means Cameron Mitchell is going to be probably playing an outside corner because you want to be able to show that he can do both opportunities for these guys. Ronnie Hickman, can he continue what started really well for him last year? The playoff game certainly was a, you know, a thorn in everyone's foot, but can Ronnie Hickman, who's back in practice now, get back into the fold? Cause you know, there's three great veterans in front of him, but that doesn't mean you want to dwarf, dwarf the, the growth path that it looked like Ronnie Hickman was finding his way on last year. So a lot going on here. Browns had an off day today. The renderings of the new stadium, just what you see in the pictures, it is absolutely gorgeous. You see what the vision is here. Um, they, they are ready to pour in a massive amount of money in it. And you Browns, Browns fans deserve this. You deserve a stinking palace. You do. You've had to watch a lot of bad football for a really, really long time. Now you have a team that is certainly trending upward and a beautiful new stadium in a few seasons to get to go watch them participate in. I am your host, Jeff Lloyd. Appreciate everybody makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. The everyday crowd is a bunch of filthy animals, but they're my filthy animals. Join the filthy animals. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcasts. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on ELLB. Let's go Browns.